Hello class. In this video, I'm going to go over the um, case problem analysis from MindTap chapter 25. Let me switch out, put the problem on the screen. All right, so in this problem, um, it's here on the screen. Um, you'll see that it says that we have a character, Abby Novel, who has signed a handwritten note that reads Glenn Galwitz 1-8-2002 loaned me $5,000 at 6% interest, a total of $10,000. The note did not state a time for repayment. Abby used the funds to manufacture and market a patented jewelry display design. More than three years after Abby signed the, sign, Abby signed the note, Glenn filed a suit to recover the stated amount. Abby claimed that she did not have to pay because the note was not negotiable as it was incomplete. Is Abby correct? So let's take a look. Uh, first few questions are more um, general about the law and then it will get into questions regarding this particular instrument and we'll be able to make a conclusion. All right, so number one, the Uniform Commercial Code specifies four types of negotiable instruments, drafts, checks, notes, and the fourth is, is it certificates of deposit, financing statements, security agreements, UCC1s, or commercial paper? All right, well, we know that it is this fourth type, which is the certificate of deposit. Question number two. The type of negotiable instrument in this case is a apologize class. There it is. Is it a draft, a check, a note, or certificate of deposit? Well, it's pretty clearly um, indicated that it is a note. You'll see there's only two parties um, as we described earlier. Um, so no problem, this is a note. Number three, the UCC may classify a negotiable instrument as a, is it either a demand instrument or a time instrument, meaning it is payable on demand and thereafter for a reasonable period of time. The answer here is demand instrument. Number four, the UCC may also classify a negotiable instrument as a time instrument, meaning it is payable at a future date or on a future date. All right, let's go to number five. The UCC has the following requirements for instruments to be negotiable. The instrument must be in writing, the instrument must be signed by the maker. The instrument must include an unconditional promise. The instrument must state a fixed amount of money. And lastly, the instrument must be payable on demand. And which of the following? All right. Must the instrument be oral, signed by the payee, include a conditional order to pay, state a variable amount of money, be payable at some point in the future, payable to order of or to the bearer, be payable to order of or to the maker, or payable to the order of or to the payee. All right, those last couple are, are kind of silly sounding actually, but um, what is the missing uh, element here in number five? Uh, it should be payable to the order of or to the bearer of the instrument. All right, um, number six. The instrument in this case is which of these? Is it a demand instrument because it does not include a definite date or is it a time instrument because it is payable on a future date? It is a demand instrument, the instrument because it does not have a definite date of payment. All right, we'll continue to talk about the instrument in this case. Let's look at number seven. All right, in this case, which party? Is it Abby or Glenn who is the maker? Well, Abby is the one um, who um, is going to owe on the note uh, if it's found that um, it is a valid instrument. So um, Abby is the maker. That would then make number eight, Glenn, the payee. Okay. 
Oops, sorry. All right, number nine. In this case, the instrument was, is it oral or is it in writing? Well, we know that it is in writing. Um, it was a, a note, so there is definitely a physical instrument. All right, number 10, the instrument was signed by which party? Is, uh, if at all, it is signed by Abby the maker. Um, and here, um, you know, I think uh, if you take a closer look, let me just scroll back up to the facts. Um, it, it does say she signed it, all right? Um, it doesn't actually indicate where or um, how she signed it, but it does say she signed it. All right, let's scroll back down. All right, so we're moving on then to um, number 11. There was an unconditional or a conditional promise to pay. All right, um, um, the answer you want to insert here is unconditional. There is an unconditional promise to pay. Although, you know, technically, um, you know, I have a little question about this. I look at the language. Let me scroll back up again. And um, it, the language seems to be much more like an acknowledgement uh, because of the way it's worded. All right. Um, it says uh, that Abby signed an instrument that says Glenn Galwitz on this date loaned me $5,000 at this rate uh, of interest for a total of you know, $10,000, all right? So the l idea of the, the word, using the word loan um, seems much more like an acknowledgement rather than an unconditional promise. To, I promise to pay Glenn for the loan he made to me, um, but, um, I don't want to argue with the authors right here. So um, I want you to get the point on this question. So number 11, is that there's an unconditional promise to pay. All right, number 12, the instrument includes the principal, the interest, and total payment, which is which of these um, elements? Fixed amount of money or variable, sorry, variable amount of money, fixed amount of money. Number 13, the instrument does not include a specific or definite repayment date, which means what? That it is now payable on demand. Okay, it is going to be payable on demand. Number 14, the instrument was payable to which party? Is it payable to Abby or to Glenn? Um, it indicates that it's payable to Glenn. Number 15, therefore the instrument you should be able to conclude, you know, with the caveat that I had talked about um, just a moment ago. All right, but the instrument is a negotiable instrument. And if it is negotiable, Abby is going to be required to pay Glenn. All right, so take the exercise, uh, use it as a way to review the required elements for a negotiable instrument um, and um, being able to spot them. Uh, in any given instrument that you might be shown. All right, we're going to move now to take a look at the what if section of this problem. I need to scroll down there and get it up here on the screen though. There it goes. Sometimes I don't know. Why am I having trouble opening this? Oh, wrong, wrong. Scroll bar. Come on. All right, here we go. All right, this is pretty short, even shorter than some of the others that we have seen. There's two. There are two questions. So, what if the facts were different? All right. So, number one. Assume that Abby orally agreed to repay Glenn $5,000 plus interest, but only on the condition that the business venture succeeded. Is the instrument negotiable? Well, having just reviewed the six elements that are required for a negotiable instrument, you can see here in this um, new uh, revised um, hypothetical that there are going to be some problems. All right, so no, it is not going to be a negotiable instrument. And why is that? Well, first of all, um, the new facts tell us that Abby orally agreed. And remember, a negotiable instrument must be in writing. All right. Um, and then the second problem is over here. Um, there's some condition built into the repayment, right? Abby promises to pay only if her business 
succeeds, all right? That's not allowed either for a negotiable instrument. You must have an unconditional promise to pay uh, in uh, a negotiable instrument. All right, so no, number one is no. All right, number two, why? The instrument was oral, we just went over this, and uh, which of these three? Um, the instrument was in writing, the instrument includes an unconditional promise to pay, or the instrument includes a conditional promise to pay. It is this third one which we just discussed. All right, so class, we have finished now with the um, complete case problem analysis from chapter 25. I'm going to close out the video and uh, we'll pick up later in, with chapter 26.